بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وآله وأصحابه أجمعين رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وأهل لقة من لساني يفقه قولي السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته I hope the departure of Ramadan has not made your iman deport you <laughs> Subhanallah <laughs> Allah Subhanallah uh, Just a disclaimer like bear with us a couple of us are sick you know we're all we're of recovering, them. <laughs> okay. we're recovering from sickness so like if we sound weird or whatever you know just bear with us inshallah but we're talking about um what's it called we're talking about something that we heard at our eid khutbah uh the brother who gave the khutbah he was talking about uh like the, de- the departure of ramadan and how people's iman will depart from them and they won't find it until the next ramadan you know it doesn't it's not just essentially about being a ramadan muslim but it's also like uh, you did all that work during Ramadan to better your iman, to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then you'll start engaging in those sins that you were engaging in before Ramadan. Even if you're still engaging in your acts of worship, you'll still engage in these sins, knowing that they're sins. And knowing that you, even if even if they're just disliked, like you left them during Ramadan and then you want to pick them up after Ramadan. But even so, looking at this occurrence, leaving it off sins during Ramadan and picking them back up after Ramadan, does this not show... How Ramadan truly is a month of blessedness and a month of worship and a month of mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to show you that you can do it, to show you that you can leave off these sins. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we are reminded, like, we are reminded all the time, Allah is not just the Lord of Ramadan, He is the Lord of all months. And having that taqwa to know that is act as if every single day is Ramadan, every single month is Ramadan, subhanAllah. You know, what do you think about it? There could be a placebo hidden inside like the virtues of Ramadan, if you think about it. If you really think about it, um, like you see how or we're told during Ramadan, you know, the shayateen, they're locked up. So mm-hmm. it's like if you do if you do an evil act, that's upon you. That's purely upon you. But when it's outside of Ramadan, you can blame it. Like, oh, yeah, look at shaitan. The wasosa got me. Mm-hmm. And so like during Ramadan, you're looking at it like, OK, see, I'm doing a lot better because, you know, shaitan's locked up. You know, the mercy of Allah is a lot closer to me right now than maybe in other months because this is the most holy month. But when Ramadan is like is over, you know, subjectively as a Muslim, you can feel like, oh yeah, look, Shayateen, they've been released. And you can kind of feel that. You can mm-hmm. kind of feel the evil that's surrounding you. But that's subjective. You know, that's for someone who truly strived during the month of Ramadan to do their best. And then outside of Ramadan, they could feel like, okay, see the evil thoughts that creeping back in, the 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 desire to in, engage in these acts that are not beloved to and Allah are, are creeping inside my mind and stuff like that. And you know, we're not the only people to experience it. The Sahaba, they used to get sad from the departure of Ramadan. Well, it's it's pretty evident, dude. Ramadan nights are like no other. The, the masajid they're filled 30 out of 30 nights. And it's, it's you're, you're worshiping and like you're engaged in the worship, not just yourself, but the people around you, your family. And it's almost like every single thing that's happening is reminding you of, of Allah. And then the, that departure of Allah, like it's sad. And what it's just sad, man. So well, like you said, you know, this shows us how much of a blessed month this is. Like we see, like at least during Ramadan, like all Muslims should come, like they all come to the masjid. You know, we should at least try to finish the whole Quran within Ramadan. You mm-hmm. know, it's the month of the Quran. It, it truly is a blessed month, right? So whenever you know Ramadan leaves, you see the masjids they're now empty again, which is you know quite saddening, right? Mm-hmm. You know, you see the iman in people's hearts it starts to departure, right? You see the shaitan is back now. You know, you're going to be tempted a lot more. It's going to be a lot harder to fight the shaitan. You know, you're going to be indulged in more struggle. Mm-hmm. Right? But in Ramadan, you know, it just shows you, you know, you can really do like the impossible, right? Like you you, you abstain from the halal. You abstain from eating and drinking all day. And you think you, you can't abstain from smoking a cigarette. You know, you had people who died over this religion. You know, in Ramadan, you know, it's a truly blessed month to, as a reminder for us. Mm-hmm. It's like a test for the rest of them. It's like um an example to see you to give people the taste of Iman, what it's like to be a Muslim every single day, <coughs> 30 out of 30 days, subhanAllah. Well, when you think about it, like... This is such a sad episode. How? Because, bro, Ramadan <laughs> is gone, man. I could, even, I could already feel it, like, during this episode. Like, the past episode we made during Ramadan, I could already feel it. It's crazy. <clears throat> well, think, thinking about it, like, yeah, obviously, the, the departure of Ramadan is sad. Like, Eid is a celebration. But when you grow up, like Eid becomes less about, oh yeah, you know, celebrating the end of Ramadan, but it's more like celebrating the completion of Ramadan. But you're also just like, nah, I'd rather have Ramadan every single day. Yeah. Like, 
I'd rather abstain from eating and drinking the rest of my life from Fajr until Maghrib if that meant that Shaitan was going to be locked up and that the mercy of Allah was going to be as close as possible to me. Like, mm. you know how easy it is to wake up for Tahajjud during the month of Ramadan? Mm -hmm. Because you're, you're, you uh, you have the niyyah to wake up to eat suhoor. You, now you have the niyyah to wake up and pray Tahajjud, make dua before you even have your suhoor and then you have your suhoor and then you pray uh, your Fajr. Like, sacrifice your sleep, your effort, your time, and it was, it, we all, like, the people during Ramadan, they did this willingly, and it was like, as if something, it was like, as if in their hearts, they just, as if their hearts were for, were waking their body up to do this these acts, and it's like, they're outside the month of Ramadan, it's like, like, where is that, subhanAllah, it's really, right, it's, so I mean, allow me to share this. Like, this is something from my own experience. Like, I, you know, while while working and fasting, right? I had coworkers ask me, you know, Austin, if they were to offer you two hundred thousand dollars to eat right now, would you? And I said no. I was, they're like, how about a million? I said no. They're like, that's unbelievable. I said, how? I'd rather die right now than take a sip of water willingly. Wow. And like that just shows you, like, in Ramadan, you know, during like Ramadan, like, atmosphere. you know, it's just yeah, it's just a different atmosphere, you know. You just built different during Ramadan because the help of Allah is, is definitely near. You know, Allah, Allah is helping you. By the will of Allah, anything is possible, right? So, you know, by the will of Allah, you know, you can can abstain from these things. Hold on. I'll be right back. Man, but we'll lie, man. 30 out of 39, like. I can't get. I can't even get over the fact that I'm on the thirty nights. You sure thirty nights? <laughs> Whatever. I said thirty out of thirty days. <laughs> but man, I, <laughs> are you okay, brother? Just like what a lot, bro. Dude, we're all so sick. But man, that. But even like Eid, like with us, man, Eid was Alhamdulillah it was so well. But like eating during the day was it was good. It was it felt amazing. But like then the next day after Eid, it was like, man, I wish it was Ramadan. Man, I wish I was like, fasting. Again. Like you said, like it felt like Ramadan was so long ago. Yeah. Like the feeling is just so much different, right? Like you see, like the, the you feel the blessings of Allah. Mm -hmm. Like I said, you know, this is a subjective, right? So the Muslims can relate to me on this, mm -hmm. especially the ones who try to better their iman. Mm -hmm. And one thing I want to put emphasis on, what Hussein was saying was change. Mm -hmm. Did you change this Ramadan? Did you? Did you come out Ramadan with a different mindset, a different, a different approach to life than or you when you first entered it? The Prophet ﷺ stated uh, that they only get from Ramadan just uh, thirst hunger and, and, thirst. Uh, and hunger and thirst. You know, we didn't want to be amongst those people. We want to be the people who benefited from from the month of Ramadan, who read the Quran, who memorized the Quran, who who bettered ourselves, who, who bettered our character, who bettered our prayer, who sought the forgiveness of Allah, the mercy of Allah, who were one of those where Allah picks. You know, Jahannam has made haram for you. We want to be amongst those people. Speaking of which, I don't know where I just stepped in from, but what I heard. So the thing, the thing that made me really want to talk about this was that the first day, literally on Eid, I see a whole bunch of people posting like haram things. Like I see people posting with music when during the whole month of Ramadan, they weren't posting with music. I see people posting uh, videos or pictures of them like. Uh, showing off their aura or showing off in general, like you know, showing off, like being prideful in yourself. That's yeah. a, that's a sin, man. For sure. And like I'm seeing these things, I'm like, bro, where was this during during Ramadan? Like you want to just the first day that Ramadan is, ends, you're gonna already start speaking engaging. Speaking of these music, things. you know, you have people who say music is not haram, but then during the month of the Ramadan, they abstain from listening to music, and then you see on eight, they start listening to music again. Like, where's the logic in that? Like, just really think about that. Oh, yeah, music is not haram. But during Ramadan, I'm not going to listen to music. Because, of course, you know that, you know, and during the month of Ramadan, music will take away your focus. Music won't allow you to listen to the Quran and to memorize the Quran. It's going to take away from you. It's not benefiting you in any way, shape, or form. However, on the other hand, what Allah has prescribed for you will always benefit you in every way, shape, or form. And nothing can compare to that. Mm, subhanallah, the Quran, Quran al Karim, the Furqan, the means in which you can distinguish right and wrong. The one he reviewed it, he revealed it in the Quran, in the month of Ramadan. So speaking of right and wrong, like you know, the music is is wrong in during Ramadan and outside of Ramadan. You know, remember Allah is the Lord of all months, not just the Lord of Ramadan. Mm -hmm. The morality is objective, no matter what time period we're in. Subhanallah. Well, when you like, what's it called? Um, speaking of the Quran. 
doing Khatam al Quran at the Masjid, bro, it feel it's such a different feeling. It was like I don't know, hearing hearing all these surahs that you know I've just listened to before. I've never recited myself because I don't. I mean, I memorized them. It was it was a way different feeling because I'm sitting here like, dang, like, and like. I could see myself understanding parts of the stories and understanding what's what's being said at times, and I'm like, dang man, like this is this is just this is a really good feeling. And then it's the word of the God. best That's feeling. It. The best feeling was when I they would recite something I knew. I'm like, hey, I know this, <laughs> yo. <laughs> like for for instance, like you know the beginning of Surah Al Baqarah, like from the first ayah to around ayah 35. Like I know those ayahs very well. I don't I don't necessarily memorize them, but I listen to them a lot. Like hear them all the time. Mm-hmm. Because you guys, and mm-hmm. so when I, when we were sitting down the first day, I was like, "Dang, what the heck, yo? That I first, know this." That first night of Tarawih was so man. That first Elif Lam meme, man, it hit different, man. I, it, man, it's get it, like, bro, we're just reminiscing back on Ramadan. It felt like when, so, it feels so said, long ago. It felt like when bro, it was said, just two days ago we were fasting. When you were talking about Surah Imran, you're like, how you know you don't get to hear Surah Imran very much, and then you hear Elif Lam meme. Uh, Allahu la ilaha illa. Yeah. Like, you know, it's one of the best feelings. Or right? when you said that the last two pages of Surah Ma'i that were being recited, you you said you instantly thought of me because I was reciting <laughs> them to you before Ramadan. You know, Allah Subhanallah, it's, it's crazy. Yeah, no, that was that was that one was crazy, especially like when we uh, we went to Tarawih and uh, what's it called? Like the first first few rakat, it was Surah Ma'ida, and then we get to the the last page of Surah Ma'ida. I'm like, hey, yo. I know these ayahs. Like, I, mean, I understood every single thing that he was saying. I was low-key reading along uh, with the imam because he he likes he memorizes Surah Al-Mahid a lot, so he likes to read a lot. I was like, yo, the heck? He knows that. Man. And then um, for myself, like, you know, my, fa- my favorite parts were, you know, the middle of the Quran, the parts of the Quran that I don't get to read very much. Mm-hmm. Like, let's say, like, Surah Ghafir. You know, Surah Ghafir is such a nice surah, but I don't get to read it as They're all often. nice. <laughs> like, oh, my. Um, what else? Like these these are surahs I want I need to I want to read more often, but I don't get the chance to because I'm memorizing other things. Uh man, when we got to Surah Rahman, man. I was sitting there like, dang. This you is know, my spot. You know what I got to really miss out on that I wanted to hear during Talawi was Surah Khan. I wanted to really hear that during Talawi. Like I, I would watch it like YouTube videos that like of me just listening to Surah Surah Dukhan during Talawi. And well, it's beautiful. But you know, I, I wanted to have that experience in person and I missed it. During that May Allah, Allah allow us to reach the next Ramadan. Yeah. And allow it to be a better Ramadan than this Ramadan. Yeah, so, I mean, one one thing just to speak about Ramadan is like, you see the the level of community that the messages build during the month of Ramadan. Like, not only you praying Tarawih, but you see all the youth who like, they'll pray, they'll pray the Tarawih or whatever, and then they'll go out, you know, they'll hang out with their friends and stuff like that until their parents are done. You know, people playing basketball, people playing soccer. Staying out to Sahur. Yeah, people staying out to Sahur. Like, and you know, no, none of these kids they're doing, they're not doing anything bad. They're sitting here, they're having fun. You know, they're doing their thing. They've engaged in their acts of worship. And these are just the youth. These aren't even the yeah, grown like, folks. Like, what community, what sect, what ideology do you know that has their children acting in accordance with its ideals and following what the religion has prescribed for them, other than Islam? Which one? Bring it to me. Like, subhanAllah, like, they are all, like, it's like just pure goodness. Like, during the month of Ramadan, man, it felt so sweet. It was so sweet. But, like, the departure of it is bittersweet. Like, look, you, you just, like, we're not even going to talk about feelings here. Like, look, look at people exchanging, like, people bringing food, feeding each other, feeding the poor. The fundraisers. Think yeah, about how many people earned so much good from this These are all Ramadan. things that we can see. Yeah. Everyone can see. No one can deny this. Yeah. Like during Ramadan, without a shadow of a doubt, like there are people giving. There are people feeding the poor. There are people, you know, coming together. Families coming together. Like Islam, like one of the one of the strongest things that we hold is family values because you know the family structure is what keeps a society going. Like if if you mm-hmm. break it down from the family, you know the society is going to be terrible. Mm-hmm. No, with that, with all that being said, right? Let's let's transition into talking about like the departure of Ramadan, like. Not leaving off the habits that you build during Ramadan or the things that you try to improve on during the month of Ramadan, right? Like, see, the month of Ramadan has has gone. And that's one month where you have so much time to engage in acts of worship that you can improve on. And it, it's made easier for you by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But now you have 11 months till the next Ramadan to improve on uh, on certain things. Now, granted... I'm not going to tell you it's going to be easier than doing it in Ramadan, but that's that's ultimately up to you. Like, 
you increasing your acts of worship, you increasing your iman, getting closer to Allah is ultimately up to you. Like Allah will provide you the opportunities, but you have to take you have to take the route. Like you got to start, you got to walk the steps yourself. And you've proven you can do it. During Ramadan, you were going to Taraweeh every night. You were praying in the night every single night. Could you, you imagine? Abstaining from sin. <laughs> abstaining from sin. Abstaining from food and drink. One of the most desirable things for a human being. But you halal. Can't, you were abstaining from halal. Abstaining from halal. But you can't abstain from something that Allah has That made is a, bad for you. Matter made of fact. for you. Like, think about it like this. Were you someone who you only woke up and did extra acts of worship on the odd nights of Ramadan or on the odd nights of the last 10 nights? Or were you doing it on every single night? Because... Doing that gives you a sense of security, knowing that you will catch Laylatul Qadr, mm. and you will catch the the will. I mean, the reward of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala if you did every single night sincerely and seeking the reward of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, right? Because even even if you caught Laylatul Qadr, even every single night, there's still there's still baraka. some reward yeah, to there's it. There's still barakah in every single night. But obviously, catching Laylatul Qadr, that's the one Man, you want. That's, yeah, that's, and that's that bullseye right there. Yeah, exactly. So. If you didn't, if you didn't do that this this time, if you make it to the next Ramadan, you know, make that, make May that. May Allah goal. make us amongst no, those who make it to the next Ramadan, Ramadan and accept it from us. I mean, and also, also think about like, also think about the position you're in right now, the position that you left Ramadan in, and how you can take your habits and in, and amplify them. Like, okay, I'll give you an example for myself. Um, so I've 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 learned I learned Quran like we had a Quran challenge with our friends you know we'll, there's a whole separate video coming about that but we did a Quran challenge see we took that this was something this is the first time we ever did it and mm -hmm. we challenged all our uh, all our brethren you all, know, our all our brethren friends. man to learn a surah in the Quran a surah none of us knew and we're like this is something that we might now I'm thinking about doing outside of Ramadan. Like even last year after Ramadan, I said, uh, like I, I challenged everybody. I was like, yo, everybody got to learn. Five surahs like, for the summer. Yeah, everybody got to learn like five surahs for the summer. But that was more for like, if you didn't know surahs in Juz Amal, because obviously learning those five surahs in there should be a lot easier for you. But this one, this one was one surah. It was, it was let's a up the surah. Let's up the ante and, next time, inshallah. Yeah, too. see, and then next year we're going to up the ante. Even, even around this summer or until next Ramadan, we're going to up the ante. We're going to still try to challenge each other. Challenge each other, each other yeah. But... You know, the goal is to continue to increase until all of us are knowing the exact same surahs. We're learning the exact so same. So all of us, we can go because to, we can meet up at someone's crib. We're all going to leave Taraweeh every single night, 30 for 30 in Ramadan. Exactly. Like, it's like that. And you also think about it. Gonna we're all going to be in a position where. We're racing for the reward of uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah. Man, that's the one thing, man. At Ramadan, man, you've seen everyone get up in the night. And everyone was like, you ask yourself, why are all these people here? What is their benefit? Like, like what is staying up all night going to do for me? In this world, but then it's like, man, they're they're chasing the word of Allah. I'm chasing the reward of Allah. Subhanallah. Like the prayer is better for you than the sleep. Obviously, yeah, we need sleep. Even even like when you like you see the people doing ihtikaf or sleeping at the masjid, these people aren't even like sleeping in the night. They're 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 wide awake, man. They're reading Quran like every single conversation in the masjid. Inshallah, is the Quran is about will come Quran. Like, uh, bear witness for us on the day of judgment. judgment inshallah, Be a beacon of light for them on the day of judgment, man. I see. These are the types of this is the ummah of the Rasul alayhi salatu wasalam. This is his nation. The ones who strive in, the, in God's cause and pay money and give zakah and charity and salakah for like, God's cause. Wow. Yeah. Look, I'm not going to lie. Wasn't learning the Quran a lot easier in Ramadan? Obviously, you know, we're saying this subjective. But like, yeah. Yeah, you know. Oh, I forget. That's objective, bro. <laughs> like, look, listen, like, just, just, just think about it. Like, beginning of Ramadan, especially, like, some like some of the surahs I didn't know and just I'm, I was doing one surah a day like with ease like I'm talking about an hour I already had it memorized and like I move on to the next surah and you know just to like you know Even what's like, it called not not to make it hard on myself I, okay I just limited it to one a day so that I'd make sure I memorized it perfectly no but it was even crazy because like like with you guys I'd hear you recite a surah or verse I I had from a surah. Mm -hmm. And then I'd, I wouldn't memorize them, but I, I'd recognize them. So if I heard it somewhere else, I'd know it instantly. Like, like that's that was the crazy thing in Taraweeh. I'd be hearing these ayat, and I'm like, yo, okay, I know exactly what surah we're on. Because like, let's say I missed a day of Taraweeh, and then I come back, and I'm like, okay, I don't know exactly where we're at. Because like, even though they were doing khatam, like, they were going kind of fast. So I didn't know which like which juz we would be on. But then I'd be able to catch up like this. This, is, this is kind of like off topic, but what was your favorite surahs during this Taraweeh? I'd like to hear just a favorite surah, not surahs, but surah. 
to hear that. Like, what was your favorite portion of Surah Hood? Surah Hood, really? Yeah. I don't even I don't even listen to Surah Hood that that often. I you know, as is right now. But, but you, you know, like it, you like Tarawiyah. Yeah. yeah. Long of course, yeah, well, so it depends. Like, I'm not going to go full surah, but I'll definitely say, obviously, surah Rahman. All of just Tabarak al Um that was, a, that was a good, nice of Um Surah Al-Baqarah. Because I don't, like, for some reason, that entire story is just so clear to me. Even if I even if I don't remember Surah Al-Baqarah, it's like, I just, I just know the story. Like, I could just hear it, and I'm just like, I know exactly what's going on. Yeah, man. And then also sort of thought, man. Nah, I'm using mine. Yeah. The, mine is the one after the sort of MBA, man. Sort of MBA, yeah. man. It's like, bro, MBA, man. It just relays the stories of a lot of the prophets, and Allah is telling them how, telling us how they called upon him, and he responded to them, like towards like the end of the sort of life, man. Subhanallah, it's just an amazing sort of hits different. Just hearing about those before us who were struck with calamity, and how did they handle it, and it, it, we should try to emulate how they handle it or imitate it in such a way. And even you know, outside of Tarawi, you know, I was really trying to learn as as much of Surah Maid as I could because for me, I just felt like Surah Maid just connected a lot of the dots. Like, you know, I, yeah, especially like, for you, man. It just it, it makes sense. It makes, it sense. makes so much sense. Like, I just I'd hear this. I'd be like, whoa, like, hold on. I was asking questions about this. And you especially because you you're, you're the one who you like to debate the Christians and uh, engage in the debates over. Uh, you like to fight for Islam and. Tell, tell people why Islam is the truth in Surah Ma'ya that it relays a lot of that, you know, that obje- objectiveness yeah. to it. Of course. Um, yeah, really, it, it talks about a lot of the things that they try to bring up mm-hmm. and then Surah Ma'ya, they kind of like, uh, it refutes it and it, it refutes it in, a subje- in an objective way, but they take it subjective because they think they can like, you know, twist the words. Or it even talks about, you know, of course, like the miracles of Isa alayhi salam. Isa alayhi or like, salam. you know, what the children of Israel said, you know, whenever he, he performed these miracles. And like, it just reminds you of like, yeah, think about it. Isa he was raising the dead in front of these people. He was curing the blind. And yet they still disbelieved in him. They, they came up with some excuse on why not to believe him. Like they said, this is nothing but clear magic. So like, you know, it just reminds mm-hmm. you of like all the other prophets. They were also all denied too, because, mm-hmm. you know, some people always had uh, some sort of excuse, right? And it's the same thing in our time with the prophet, you know, they deny him. You know, know. for what? We have so much evidence for it, but you know, these people are, you know, deaf, dumb, and blind. You know, the people who get the message and they don't want to, they don't want to believe in it. They know Islam is the truth. But you know, the arrogance is what holds them back. Always, always remembering that there's no intermediary between you and Allah. Like all these, all these people who disbelieve in their, in their prophets and their messengers, they always thought that there was an intermediary between them and God or in like with them and who they can use to get to God. And what do you think causes this? What, did they think that Allah, that they were too sinful for Allah, that they had to go to someone else to go on their behalf? Did they think that Allah was, wasn't was hearing or seeing? Did they think that Allah wasn't knowing of what his creation would do or knowing what was in the chest? That's, that, that, that's, that's really a good point there. Like why would God create something or a creation that he doesn't know about? To the point where he's like, all right, my creation can't talk to me, even though I created them this way. Like, like you know, it's, it's kind of crazy to think about. Yeah, like, and Allah. Like, in Islam, that's, that's beautiful. And alhamdulillah, we have a, we ha- in Islam, we have a direct connection with God. You know, there's no, the salah, there's no the connection between us. Like, mm-hmm. we don't pray for the Prophet Muhammad to get salah. to God. No. His job is only to convey the message. And our connection is with God alone. And we bear witness that he has conveyed the message. And we bear witness that there's no the God except the Allah. Well, yeah, yeah, look the, at it. Look at it. Like when, 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 when people used to ask the Prophet to make dua for them, he'd be like, you know, it's better if you to make dua yourself. Yeah. Even though, like, obviously, if he makes the dua, it'll be accepted. But he was like, it'll be better if you do it yourself. Because that means you lessen your reliance upon the Prophet and... Like increase your reliance upon Allah, increase your reliance upon your your form of ibadah. Like the fact that you worship Allah so much that you trust that He will answer your dua, and He is hearing and he will do the yeah, like He's who's, hearing and seeing, and He will do what's best for who you. Who is bearing witness in the most darkest room when you're by yourself? There's no one around. You're lonely. There's tears in your eyes. Who is bearing witness to your prayer or to your dua other than Allah? Other than Allah, yeah. Other than Allah, who is bearing witness? You can't like no one. No one will help when you die. No one will help you except no one will help you except your actions that you did before. And that Allah, Allah witnesses Look, everything, and Allah is hearing and seeing, and Allah is not forgetful. And that's the thing, like you know, when it comes to that, and then when it comes to like you know justice, right? 
You know, it just also reminds me of the, the end of Surah Al-Ma'idah when Allah talks about the day of judgment. Uh, like, you know, this day, the, the truthfulness of those truthful people will, will actually benefit them. Like this day, like it'll benefit them like no, none other before because we see people here like, you know, good people, you know, they get ridiculed, but you know, they, they don't deserve it. Mm -hmm. But what is this? It's merely then a test? SubhanAllah. You know, that, that's like one of the craziest things that I just thought about was possibly one of the greatest, possibly the greatest reminders of the Quran is all the eyes that, are, that repeat itself where Allah mentions his names, where, you know, like how whenever we're reading in Salah, especially at the masjid, you know, the, the Imam, he would like to finish on an ayah that where Allah states one of his names. Allahu Ghafoor Rahim, Allahu Samir Alim, Allahu Al Aziz Al Hakim. Like these, Allah reminding you of these names. What, because who can hold these names other than Allah? Who, what names? Subhanallah, man. What do these names befit other than the Majesty of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala? Who's the most wise? The who's the most just? The who's the most? Uh, who's the all hearing, the all seeing, the all knowing? That's why when you call out to Allah and you call him by his, these names, you call Allah by His Majesty, by His name, by His names and attributes, because you're acknowledging that, that He is the only one defeating over you. Him. Like, yeah, you can hear, but Allah is over you hearing. Allah is over you knowing. Allah is over you seeing. And wisdom, without Allah, yeah. you have none of these attributes. Mm -hmm. All these attributes were given to you by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So without them, you're nothing. And without Allah, you're you're exactly not like you're dust, you're zero, you're, and you're imagine, not even And imagine, <laughs> imagine what was what was the argument that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made to those who said Jesus was God or Mary was God or they were one of three. Who would defend them? Against Allah, he decided to destroy him, them and all of mankind. Yeah, Allah said, you know, at chapter number five, verse 17, Allah talks about, you know, certainly they disbelieve who say Allah is the Messiah, son of Mary. But, you know, who against Allah could, could go against Allah if he des decided to destroy Jesus, son of Mary, his mom, and all that is on the earth. And to Allah belongs whatever is in the heavens and the earth and all that is in between them. And Allah creates as he wills and he has power over all things. Mm -hmm. What can you ascribe that is more powerful than that? Mm -hmm. Nothing. This, who, is the, who this really, is the who, independent, competent being that every single thing in existence is dependent on him. And we are unknowing of his creation and he is knowing of our creation. I just think about or it. If he's he talking about whatever is in the heavens and the earth, meaning all that exists belongs to him. What, who, who, who is going against that? And he, he, he creates as he pleases, right? Like meaning he created you, he created whatever as he pleases, right? No, no one can go against what Allah has created. No one can question the creator. And on top of that, Allah has power over all things, all things, including you, including Jesus, including all the prophets, including everything that's in between the heavens and the earth. He has power over all things. You know, like I said, you can't describe anything that's more powerful than that. So yeah, knowing that, knowing the, the power of Allah, like knowing your Lord, that's one of the most important things. And that's why, like, uh, it was the previous episode saying, like, how we started Dean Tour, it was the knowledge was a lot of the things. And one of the most important things is knowing your Lord. How are you going to worship Allah if you don't know him? People are mm -hmm. like, oh, uh, especially a lot of non-Muslims, they talk about Allah being incomprehensible, like God is incomprehensible. He's not. He told, like, if you open the Quran, what does he tell you? <laughs> Allah, Bismillah rahman rahim in the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful, the most beneficent. Like, and is this, does everything, this not describe your Lord? Everything, everything, everything in the Quran is, 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 is out of mercy, right? So what Allah has showed us, what Allah has given us, especially the Quran, is out of mercy. It's Ar-Rahman Alam Al-Quran. Not Al-Aziz Al-Alam Al-Quran. Ar-Rahman. Everything is out of mercy. So when you open up the Quran, you learn something about Allah from the Quran, it is out of mercy. It's out of mercy for, for you mm. and all of mankind. All of mankind. Yeah, so like... Oh yeah, and the last part. Go ahead. No, the Quran doesn't just talk to the Muslims. It talks to Ya Ayyuhannas, like all mankind, all or, people. or all people of the book, or it talks to the Muslims too. Like it talks to everyone. Like I said, it's a message to all of mankind. So don't don't get it twisted saying that Islam was sent to the Arabs or Islam is only for the Muslims. Like no, it is is an invitation to all of mankind. And that's to the Muslims. If you have a non-Muslim friend, reveal it, reveal the Quran to them. It's for uh, an nas it's for the all people, it's for everyone, subhanAllah. To, like yeah, the Quran is for the Quran is for all people, and for the people who engaged and practiced during Ramadan, take what you did during Ramadan, amplify it outside of Ramadan. Like let's see, let's see if you could engage in more acts of worship outside of Ramadan than in Ramadan, because that means the next, if you make it to the next Ramadan, like that that will feel a lot better than what you did this Ramadan, knowing that you were able to improve on yourself throughout the year. Because imagine. You like you leave off everything you did during Ramadan, and you you go back to engaging in a lot of sins. 
you know, you're doing acts of worship here and there, but for the most part, you're engaging a lot of sins. Not like what you were doing in Ramadan. Don't be a Ramadan Muslim because what if, what if you die before the next Ramadan? What are you going to do then? How are you going to answer to Allah knowing that, you know, like the best deeds that you did were in the last Ramadan? Not even in, uh, in like the months that came. Or just imagine you die. The last good deed that you did was the Eid prayer. SubhanAllah. Yeah, well, that's subhanAllah. Yeah. I think that's a tough way to end it. Like, that's a good way to end the episode, subhanAllah. It's, it's just like something to think about because uh, with the departure of Ramadan, we need to understand that, like, Allah doesn't stop We're watching. Still Muslim. Allah, Allah is still watching. He doesn't stop watching you just because Ramadan has ended. Just because, you know, the month of mercy has ended doesn't mean, uh, uh, what's it called? Just because the month of mercy has ended doesn't mean Allah's mercy stops. You know, that or your your good deeds are still multiplied by by ten. Just because they're not as multiplied as they are in Ramadan doesn't mean that you know a good deed is still not a good deed. And that's you not know? to say Allah's mercy is still not present in the months yeah, that Allah are, still Allah's Allah's still, Allah's still, yeah, in Allah's all months. Still the most yeah. merciful, the most gracious. Allah still has al Aziz al Hakim in all you, months. If you wished, yeah. He could bestow you with His mercy and have mercy on you. So Look, like, don't ever, don't ever forget. Think, don't ever forget your ibadah. Don't be grateful to Allah. Listen, yeah, take it, take it like this. Even inside Ramadan, outside Ramadan, Allah's 99 names and attributes are still uh, befitting of His Majesty no matter what day of the week it is, no matter what month it is, no matter what hour it is, no matter what second it is. Time is a construct created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So no matter what, Allah is still seeing you. Allah is still hearing your prayers. Allah is still witness to your tahajjud prayer whether you're doing it during Ramadan or outside of Ramadan. So take that, take that uh, and heed to it. Like, understand that, you know, uh, the best, the best of deeds are those that are done, even if they're few. If like they're done they're consistently, consistent. so take that and un and understand that. Yeah, that's what we leave you with. Yeah, that's what we leave with. Uh, leave you with, Subhanallah. But uh, with that being said, that's gonna close out this episode. Speaking about the departure of Ramadan, uh, don't be a Ramadan Muslim. You know, turn turn back to Allah. Do your ibadahs. Uh, do all that you can. Eat the bottom to everyone. Your, uh, was coming out way after Eid, but <laughs> do all you can to increase uh, <laughs> your, your acts of worship. But uh, yeah, you know what that being said, Salaam alaikum warahmatullah. Just remind you guys, we're not we're not scholars, we're still students of knowledge. Make sure you guys share and like this video, subscribe, share this with your friends and family. You never know whose life you can change by giving the message, by sharing this video and conveying the message. You know, with that being said, Salaam alaikum warahmatullah. Salaam alaikum warahmatullah wabarakatuh.